Germany's Leopard 2A8 program has been presented as a milestone for European armor, yet the reality of its production capacity and procurement numbers reveals an industry constrained by economics as much as by engineering. At a time when NATO members are attempting to reinforce their armed forces and ensure long-term readiness, the German tank story demonstrates how advanced technology, soaring costs, and limited political will intersect to produce results that are far less impressive than they appear at first glance. While Germany remains one of the few Western nations still producing entirely new main battle tanks, the total order book through 2031 is just 355 units. Spread across six years, that amounts to a modest output of 58 tanks annually, an output dwarfed by the South Korean K-2 program, which can deliver more than 120 vehicles a year. The disparity underscores a key challenge, Western tank design emphasizes cutting-edge systems, but this focus often comes at the cost of volume. The Leopard 2A8 is marketed as one of the most sophisticated tanks in the world, integrating enhanced protection against modern threats, upgraded fire control systems, and digital connectivity that allows it to operate as part of a fully networked battlefield. These features have made it attractive to a number of European buyers. A German-led procurement framework covers 257 tanks with an option for 20 more, shared among Germany, the Netherlands, the Czech Republic, and Lithuania. Croatia is considering participation after transferring its M84s to Ukraine, while Norway and Sweden have signed their own separate agreements. Norway initially opted for the Leopard 2A7NO, but its contract was later upgraded to 2A8 standard. Sweden ordered 44 new tanks, designated Stridsvagn 123B, while also planning to modernize its older Stridsvagn 122 fleet. Altogether, the order list looks broad, but the actual numbers involved remain surprisingly small. The economics of the program provide a simple explanation. Each Leopard 2A8 costs over 30 million euros, a price tag that pushes it into the realm of boutique procurement. This is not simply a matter of paying for advanced armor and electronics, the limited production run itself drives costs higher, as economies of scale cannot be realized when only a few hundred vehicles are built. By comparison, the Soviet and Russian tradition of tank design has long emphasized volume, with even modern variants like the T-90 produced at a far more affordable rate. Western militaries, by contrast, are effectively locked into buying a small number of exquisite but prohibitively expensive platforms, a strategy that raises questions about sustainability in a prolonged conflict. The issue becomes even sharper when measured against current battlefield realities. Tanks remain a symbol of military power, yet the war in Ukraine has demonstrated their vulnerability to relatively cheap anti-tank weapons, loitering munitions, and increasingly sophisticated drones. The cost exchange ratio looks troubling, a 30 million euro tank can be destroyed by a few thousand euros worth of guided munitions. This reality is not lost on policymakers or defense analysts, many of whom argue that investment should shift toward unmanned systems, air defenses, and precision long-range fires. Even Germany, despite championing the Leopard program, has acquired fewer than 150 of the new tanks for its own forces, suggesting that its political leadership is also weighing the risks of overcommitment to an expensive but vulnerable system. Yet there are reasons why the Leopard 2A8 remains in demand despite its drawbacks. Heavy armor continues to provide battlefield functions that cannot be entirely replaced by drones or lighter vehicles. A modern main battle tank still offers superior protection for its crew, significant psychological impact on the battlefield, and the ability to spearhead offensive maneuvers in ways lighter systems cannot. For countries such as Norway and Sweden, located on NATO's northern flank, the presence of modern tanks is seen as a necessary deterrent against a Russia that still fields large armored formations, regardless of their combat performance in Ukraine. For Germany, the Leopard line also represents industrial sovereignty, 
maintaining the capacity to produce modern armor domestically rather than relying entirely on allies. Production capacity itself is not the primary limitation. German industry could, in theory, scale up output if demand rose significantly. Rainmetal and its partners have shown readiness to expand production lines in anticipation of larger contracts, especially as Germany pursues a broader rearmament policy in response to the war in Ukraine. But so far, the demand has simply not materialized at the levels required to justify such an expansion. NATO states have been reluctant to commit to mass tank purchases, in part due to budget constraints and in part because of ongoing debates about the role of heavy armor in the evolving battlefield environment. The result is a paradox, the industry maintains the capacity to build tanks but has little incentive to increase speed without firm long-term contracts. The Leopard 2A8 procurement also highlights a deeper structural challenge within NATO. Unlike the United States, which has long pursued centralized, large-scale weapons procurement programs, European countries remain fragmented in their defense spending. Joint frameworks such as the Leopard Order Pool aim to create efficiencies, but they still fall short of producing the kind of numbers that would make tanks affordable on a per-unit basis. Each participating country tailors its order with national specifications, such as communication suites and battlefield integration systems, further complicating production and reducing commonality. This customization drives costs even higher, reinforcing the cycle of small volume, high cost procurement. Looking at Ukraine's situation adds another layer to the debate. Kiev has received Leopard 2 variants as part of Western military aid, but its armed forces remain heavily reliant on older Soviet-era tanks. Given the staggering expense of the 2A8, Ukraine is unlikely to acquire significant numbers directly, even if Western partners provided financing. More importantly, Ukrainian battlefield experience shows that while Western tanks offer advantages in survivability and firepower, they cannot dominate the battlefield alone. Drone warfare, artillery, and layered air defenses have proven to be far more decisive factors. For Ukraine, an investment in hundreds of leopards would likely be seen as a misallocation of resources compared to building larger drone fleets or strengthening long-range strike capabilities. Still, the Leopard 2A8 serves as a bellwether for broader trends in Western defense. The program demonstrates both the technological sophistication and the financial strain that characterize NATO's current approach to rearmament. It also raises fundamental questions about balance. Should NATO prioritize a small number of highly advanced platforms, betting on their qualitative superiority? Or should it return to the concept of medium weight, more affordable armored vehicles that can be fielded in larger numbers, ensuring that armies do not run short of equipment during protracted wars. These questions remain unresolved, but the Leopard program shows how the current path risks producing armed forces that are technologically advanced yet numerically insufficient. In the longer term, Germany and its partners may find themselves forced to rethink their procurement strategies. If the Leopard 2A8 remains prohibitively expensive, interest in alternative solutions, such as lighter armored vehicles, unmanned combat systems, or entirely new categories of medium tanks, could grow. Already, analysts note that Western militaries are exploring concepts that trade heavy armor for mobility, stealth, and versatility. Whether this will translate into actual procurement shifts remains uncertain, but the Leopard experience may accelerate the discussion. What is certain is that the Leopard 2A8 reflects both the strengths and the weaknesses of the Western defense model. It is an engineering marvel, capable of delivering unmatched battlefield performance under the right conditions. But it is also a financial burden, one that even wealthy nations hesitate to shoulder in large numbers. As Europe faces a more dangerous security environment, the limits of this approach are becoming harder to ignore. The Leopard 2A8 may well remain a symbol of NATO's technological edge, 
but it could also become a cautionary tale about the risks of building weapons that are too advanced, too expensive, and ultimately too rare to decisively shape the outcome of war.